Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. This is your host, Dean. On my show, my featured guest today is Maria Cap, CEO, Chief Engagement Officer of Capricelli Productions for over 20 years. Maria has been actively involved in entertainment and the arts. She has served as a committee and board member for Youth Biz Alliance, NYSTEA, EDTA, BOCES, Arts and Education, and Kids for Kids Productions. Her entrepreneurial spirit and love for theater has propelled her from small business owner and acting coach to director, producer, and founder of Capricelli Productions. Maria Cap, welcome to the Dean Blackman Show. Good morning, or good afternoon, shall I say, from sunny California to you, Dean. How are you? I'm doing great. It's uh, nothing better than getting up every day and doing this radio show. I just love it. And you know, we we met a couple of months ago that it's the greatest thing in life for me right now. So I want to thank you very much from your busy schedule to uh, making time today to be on the show. And I know we have to start out. We've got a beautiful, beautiful little chili fall afternoon here on Long Island. The, the trees are just gorgeous this time of year. Uh, fall weather, and uh, I know that uh, that you grew up in Long Island. Yes, I am a Long Island girl. I was actually, uh, I'm a New Yorker. That's definitely what I say. I was born on uh, and raised uh, for my early years in the Bronx, Castle Hill Avenue, and then my parents um I uh, migrated out to exit 59 on the Long Island Expressway back in 1969 when the Long Island Expressway actually ended at exit 59. Well, you know <laughs> so, that. Yeah. I think you know that my home and the uh, show studio is exit 62, Nichols Road, taking it north. Yes. Yes. You're just east of the Port Jefferson area, which we love. I'm missing the fall weather right now. I mean, I, I drove this morning, and one of the things I said that I was grateful for was the sunshine in Los Angeles and looking at palm trees. But when I hear of my family and friends enjoying the autumn foliage, I definitely miss it. Well, I am uh, I am three months now into uh, shows, and uh, I I think you're uh, I think you top the list as far as I have never met. Anyone, I think the big story of today's show with Maria Cap is I never met anyone that has the entrepreneurial spirit and energy like you have. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I, then you don't know how, how meaningful that is right now because I tell you, sometimes it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> it really, really is. It's exhausting. But you know. Um, I like you, Dean. I mean, I just I love what I do. And when you focus on what you love and what's really meaningful to your life, um, you know, you just you find a way to make it happen and, and all else just falls into line. I mean, I do many, many things. But at this point, at this very instant, what's most important to me is following through, executing, producing the few projects that I, I hope we'll get to talk about this morning. I We're, just feel like they're very important and very close to my heart and, you know, like what your show uh, is all about. You know, I want to inspire and inform, create awareness, mostly uh, create dialogue that lends to social change. We are going to get, we're going to get to in a little while, you know, three very big projects that you're currently working on that really inspire and create social change. We're going to get to it, but we've got to really, you know, especially with the family that I grew up with, uh, you know, four brothers, two sets of twins. Uh, then, uh, then my parents had me, the, the single son. Uh, we all uh, stuck together, uh, not only growing up as a family like that, but to uh, work together for so many years. 
I think I think before we get into your big projects and everything that you're working on and what your career, how it started, we've got to talk about your amazing, we've got to talk about your amazing family and just growing up here on Long Island. I mean, yeah. mom, mom and dad, I think you're fortunate enough. I think both are alive and well. Isn't that correct? Yes, Millie and Tom. I just spoke with them this morning before I got on the phone and they're relaxing after a beautiful evening at my um, brother and sister-in-law's house. They had dinner and they watched a movie and yeah, they're, they're wonderful. I think, let's see, they're celebrating 54. They just celebrated 54 years of marriage. Wow. And, um, wow. Mazel tov. Yes. They live in the same house that they moved to back in 1969. Um, my grandmother lives in Comac. She m migrated as well to the island after living many years in the Bronx. So yeah, and all family, all extended family. I have a cousin who, Stephanie and Matt, uh, they live very close to where you are. And then everyone is pretty much focused and centralized on Long Island. So yeah, I grew up, grew up with great parents, solid foundation. Not like what I'm doing to my kids, moving them around, shifting gears. It's been a very hectic, crazy, not um, not without fun, excitement, and drama, though, uh, journey. We've I, moved around a lot, you know, migrating here to the West Coast. For so, sure. so how often do you come back and forth, East Coast, West Coast? Well, you know, this year has been the first year where um, we didn't do our summer trip. So traditionally, in we came here in 2012. So traditionally, I've been going back and forth for at least four four times throughout the year. And this year is the first year that I didn't do the summer trip. So it's usually a winter trip, a spring trip, a summer trip, and a fall trip. So again, this year, uh, the last time I was back east was uh, late spring. And I'm not going back until January for the Nestia. That, that's the New York uh, State Theater Stage Project. was a music video that came out of Raffaella's um, creative spirit and, and endeavors at the time. So we produced the music video, So What? And um, we did that while we were in Manhattan. We worked with um, amazing people that my husband has worked with over the years in the ad business. John Kafara at the time was with EUE Screen Gems. And um, just really fortunate in being able to tap into you know, we didn't say it before, but I've always maintained a contact and a relationship with the theater community on Long Island. So simultaneous to all that other stuff going on, I was very involved in theater as well. So tapping into my theater background and producing background in theater uh, with Steve's contacts, we produced So What? And since then, um, we've produced a couple of other music videos, um, some short uh, web content, mini clips, like three and a half minutes short, um, short film, you know, we're growing slowly. Uh, what I have going on right now, which, uh, it just feels like eternity because things definitely take time, um, are the feature, uh, film project that I've talked to you briefly about. And then we have, I have a, uh, a documentary feature, which is similar. And we're just, um, very close to wrapping up another music video. Before we, before we get into, uh, the three major projects that, yeah. uh, that you, ins that you are inspiring and, uh, create social change, we've got to talk about your family more. I mean, yes, absolutely. I, have, I mean, um, I just, three I, beautiful I think yeah, it's I have three beautiful children. I have, Steve and I were both Long Island, you know, I say kids, but we are. I mean, Steve and I, we knew each other from the German deli located in Ronkonkoma, um, right near, right by the Long Island Expressway and um, St. Joseph's Church. Steve comes from a, a, a beautiful family of five. He's the middle. He has an older brother, an older sister, two younger sisters, all Long Island people they are living there still raising their children and and that's their hometown so um we have that uh he's a smithtown guy and then i graduated from connect grew up in ronkonkoma and i am the eldest of um two sisters and a brother and uh everybody has families children and everyone lives right there my two sisters interestingly enough um 
are bi-coastal, a little bit more bi-coastal than I. They go back and forth um, more because their husbands are still uh, and their homes are still uh, primarily on Long Island, but they have each have a boy, a teen boy who's part of the um, emerging and um, quickly rising popular group forever in your mind. Um, they've, uh, I, I believe they've hit the charts on Radio Disney. Uh, they had a, just signed a deal with Hollywood Records. And so um, I, I do have, I'm fortunate that I have two sisters that are here and my nephews are here. So we have family that's out here. But everybody is a Long Islander. And, um, and well, listen, I'm all sure. I all I know is that I've experienced with my own children, I've experienced, you know, what it's like when they are getting older and they're playing sports, whether it be soccer, baseball, or whether someone wants to join the chess club. How often is it that that there's someone in a family that all their children are involved and in inspiring in the entertainment business like your kids? Absolutely. I mean, I can speak personally just about my three children. My eldest, um, my eldest, Raphael, she's a, a musician. She's a singer, songwriter, actor, first and foremost. I mean, that is her training and her true love. But artistically, she also expresses herself through song. She um, currently right now is working with uh, music producers who are um, Sony uh, producers and songwriters. And um, so, yeah, she's out here. She's actually the reason we initially migrated here. Uh, then I have my daughter, Natasha. She is a stand-up comedian, um, uh, hasn't been up on in front of the mic in a little bit of time because she's really been focused on school and working. She just finished a summer at Lambda over in London, which was a beautiful uh, and really enlightening experience for her. She loves Shakespeare. So, you know, you got Shakespeare and then the stand-up comedian girl. Um, and then we have my son who is, <clears throat> excuse me, the, he's 14. And when we moved out here, he was 10. And while we were on the East Coast for a little bit, he, he also got to dabble and did some bookings um, professionally. And then out here, he's really had the most commercial success, I'll say, in terms of working as a, a young actor. You know, his IMDb credits are um, just much more um, recognizable, let's say. The girls are creating their own content, couple of web series, like I said, and, and their path and journey is different. From a, from a, I'll even toot my parents' horn, you know, they can say beyond what I say, they have grandchildren, and um, so they have me and my children, right, their grandchildren, and then they have the two, my two sisters who I mentioned. Not only do my two sisters have their boys who are out here pursuing their music careers, um, but they also have each a daughter and both their daughters, one graduated, um, with a musical theater degree and the other is studying right now in the city. And, uh, so yes, my parents have, um, you know, majority rules. They're all talented and they're all pursuing their creative endeavors professionally, not, you know, beyond what my mom did years and years ago. And then I personally, I, I just have always been drawn to it and um, from a, a personal standpoint of doing it, I've always worked as an actor. I always say I've never earned money. I never earned living as an actor, but I've always earned money as an actor. So, um, but really the, the gift for me is creating content and giving other people the opportunity to work. And that's what I've really done through Cappuccielli. I, you know, not only my kids, but their peers and other young actors who are out here pursuing um, their dream and giving them an opportunity to do that. You know, I directed a play a couple of years ago out here and I was fortunate to work with um, six amazing, young, talented kids who, uh, you know, young adults, I say kids because everyone's a kid to me now, but uh, young adults. And it was just so eye opening to see how, Everyone who is here, the plethora of talent is amazing. And there's a lot of people that are out here that are talented and not pursuing it for whatever reason, money, fear, uh, setting limitations for themselves. And then there are others that are 
just rising above talented and doing whatever it takes to have an opportunity to work and be creative. So, wow. What is it? What is it like? I mean, you're witnessing it firsthand. I mean, I'm sure there's a combination in your family of, of genetics and, uh, there's gotta be a little bit of pressure over the years. Uh, if they cho chose uh, all of them to be in the ent entertainment of business. I mean, what is it in general besides your kids? What's it like today for children to go grow up as uh, childhood uh, actors or actresses? Well, it's it's really interesting. I did another radio show with, um, and if, if it's okay to say, his name is Stephen C. Beers. He, he has a, a radio show and he wrote a book um, and it's called the uh, prudent Gu the parents prudent guide to children in showbiz. Um, anyway, I, I was asked the same question because the the point of that conversation was was really about parenting kids in the business and then the fact that I coach young people. So to answer your question, it's very difficult because what we're seeing out here, which is different than being regional Long Island and then, Manhattan and then being out here. Out here, you have this huge influx. Traditionally, it used to be called uh, pilot season, but there really is no more traditional pilot season. I mean, it still is the foundation of January through uh, April, May, where pilots are casting up. But it, um, uh, the the idea of people leaving their home, their family, and migrating here to Hollywood to pursue their dream is crazy. So just to speak to the, what it's like here, it's beyond just it happening in the, the States, but it's global. My son is in a school that all the kids that go there are in the business and work regularly, some more than others. Um, but the kids that he's exposed to, even though it's a small school, small private school, are from Australia, are from uh, Ireland. He has someone from the UK that's in the school. He does have somebody in his class who's from uh, Australia, a couple of kids from Australia. There's uh, somebody who's from, I think she's from Brazil. So he's exposed to a global um, experience, but again, majority of it is just kids here in the States who one of the parents migrates to the West coast, whether it's year round or like my sister is bi-coastal. And then depending upon how busy the child is professionally in terms of work, um, will dictate how often they're here. Um, so you ask the question, what is it like? Um, for some, it's really easy. And I think age has a lot to do with it here. Age is always on your side. And I, if you're young, if you're a kid, you have that sparkle, you have that special something where you're comfortable with adults, you um, really uh, are, are um, precocious and um, you have a natural flair to have conversation and there's a level of comfort where you don't need to be with your peers or kids your age and you have a certain look. It's not just about beautiful kids. It's We're talking just the unique individuality of a child, but just that desire to want to, to do this. And then, of course, the ability to do this. Some are better than others. Um, is... Uh, it's pretty interesting to watch. So, so your your advice, very briefly, what is yeah. your what is your brief advice for children, and what is your brief advice for parents of children? Well, I will say this is not a business for people who don't have a big bank account. So, with that said, if you don't have the fiscal means to come here to Los Angeles then you need to find opportunities in your community that are professional. And what I mean by that is it's for a young person anyway. If you live on Long Island, you need to go into Manhattan. There's no reason for that not to happen. If you're in Jersey, Manhattan, Connecticut, Manhattan. So anything. I mean, there are kids that come from Florida and go up to Manhattan. Today, though, if you're in the southern states, you don't have to come all the way to Manhattan 
New York City to get a professional opportunity. You can be in North Carolina, South Carolina, Louisiana, Atlanta. There's a huge Southern market. Uh, if you're in um, closer to the Texas area, that's a market. There's professional opportunities, films being produced and commercials and whatnot. If you're in the Midwest, you know, Chicago is a huge, huge hub of opportunity. Even Philadelphia is a localized professional regional market. So if you don't have the means to pick your life up or split your life and be one parent coming here with one kid, I mean, come here, come to LA, then that's what I suggest. Find the closest professional market and get an agent for your child. Wow. As soon as there's a spark or an interest or you see that your child professes, I want to do this. Because the earlier you do that and create that professional relationship, the easier it is for the child to transition into adulthood. And I'm not talking about hitting it big and booking a job where you know you know who they are and their face is recognizable or their name is recognizable. I'm just talking about the relationships and the credibility of that child. Wow. To already have some form of professional credits and a professional connection. Wow. So Maria, your favorite child actors growing up of all time. Um, I really, I really, really, really appreciate Joseph Gordon uh, Levitt. Wow. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think, you know, he's someone that grew, I think he's, a, I believe he's a native Californian. I think he grew up, unless he migrated here as well, I don't know. But he's from the Sherman Oaks side or the Valley side. Uh, of LA. And, you know, his story is, if you read his bio or some stuff about him, is that he, his mom and dad, when he was a little boy, you know, took him on auditions and he booked some things. Obviously he already had a great agent and he got in the room for, um, you know, third rock from the sun and he booked that. And let me tell you, the journey to book that is not as quickly as I just made it sound, but he booked that job. He was on third rock from the sun and, um, he was a, a regular. It was, it was a series. It was, he was a recognizable face at that point. And what he did was, be, I believe, because of his family and what was important to family and what they instilled in this young man, is that education was important. So here he is. He has the right agent. He was going out on auditions. He was in the right community here. He booked something as a child, um, a young kid. He grew up relatively on that show. I believe when the show ended, he went back to his high school. He went back to school and then he went to college and he went to an Ivy League school. You know, obviously he had the grades and that probably the standardized testing, but more importantly, he had the credibility that that school wanted to affiliate. You can Google, I think he went to Columbia. So it's not like I'm saying anything that's not uh, public knowledge, but he went to Columbia and what he did there, I don't even think it's, it's not necessarily that he studied acting in theater. He studied what it was like to be a human. I don't know if he's a poli sci or, you know, theology or whatever he studied. But when he left Columbia, he still had the relationships and the credibility of an, his agent, his manager. So when he came back after he did school, he started to work again as a young adult. And not only did he work in other people's work, but he created opportunities for himself and he also created, he has, I, I don't, this you have to look up. I don't know exactly, but he created opportunities for other people to work um, using his, his celebrity, using his, uh, you know, fiscal means, giving back, donating, supporting. And then he created this technology app where you can upload content and um, create, be part of a created thing. So I really, really admire him. i um, trying to think of who else. Amila Kunis, she's another young girl. Great actress, great that, actress. She was yes, great. Yes, that 70s show. Uh, and I think that she really, her path is, uh, her trajectory is one that I admire and I think is a good one. My son is friends with a young girl right now who I think is on an amazing trajectory. Her parents have an acting studio here. They're very well respected, both in their own right as professionals, um, 
in front of the camera. Uh, the, the, the husband, father is a, a voiceover artist. Um, they've been a blessing to us in terms of finding them when we moved here. My son has studied with them. And their daughter is my son's age, 14. Wow. And her resume is quite impressive, this young girl. As a matter of fact, she is currently, she, her big, she has credits that are amazing, but her big thing now, I think, which is really going to map her, is um, the Matt LeBlanc show. She's on um, Man with a Plan. Wow, wow. She plays the eldest daughter. Yeah, her name is Grace. Beautiful family. Beautiful family um, and uh, talented young girl who I think will have a trajectory. She's on a trajectory and um, uh, a journey that, you know, if if I looked at her as a young adult, I would, I'm pretty, pretty sure that she, hers will be similar to uh, Mila Kunis and or Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a couple of others, you know, but these are the ones that stand out to me. And I think family has a lot to do with it. Oh, my gosh. These kids have these these young people, these young adults who are grown into adults. You know, they really had a strong foundation. Well, I'll tell you one thing, moving away from uh, from children, I'll tell you one thing. Maria Capps got a very impressive, impressive line of credits uh, to her own name. And uh, if people, why don't you tell everybody how they could uh, follow you, your website and your production companies if they want to contact you, Maria? So, yeah, I mean, um, I'm very easy to find. All you have to do is Google my name for real. Um, but you can follow me on uh, social media. Uh, Maria Capicielli is, I think, my Twitter name. Um, Facebook, I'm Maria Cap. Um, my website for the production company is... Um, www.capicielli.com and then I do still have my acting studio website which has a lot of content in there it's not one that I regularly keep up but it's got a lot of good helpful information and uh, valuable resources especially for people just curious about the business and what's involved I have a, a page there that has a lot of information but um, certainly follow me on um, Facebook is the best place to contact me and um, and see what's going on. I try to keep that as up to date, both personally and professionally. I don't know how you keep uh, family life together and every day with your uh, Capricelli production company, how you uh, acting coach, director and producer. I, I just don't know how you uh, take care of and manage everything every day. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of um, time management of time, and it also takes a very supportive husband. <laughs> <laughs> and is I'm he, not kidding. Is he, is he active in the business? He is um, active in the advertising world. And um, although, uh, you know, his, his, his involvement in the production company, although very quiet, we'll say silent partner, is very much one that I uh, I value and depend upon. So is he active in the business? Yes, because I am. And uh, he and I, we actually have wrote, written a TV series, um, a pilot it started out with, but we're executing it and developing it into a TV series. And that's kind of like our, 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 our fourth baby together, if you will. You know, If that comes to fruition, when that comes to fruition, that's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully... Um, that'll have him much more involved, uh, hands-on. Before, sure. we, before we move on to uh, your three projects, uh, just real quickly, yeah. uh, now let's talk about adult actors growing up and actors today, your favorites. Yes. Your favorites from the past and your favorites today. Um, I think... Um... Well, let's see. I know, I know when I have I, so many. I don't mean to. Have I know when I when when I did some yeah. reading on you. I know uh, Robin Williams was one of those. Oh yeah. Well, that's you know. So we can just go right there to that era. I mean, Christopher Reeves, Robert De Niro. I love Al Pacino, and then of course you say Robin Williams. I mean, then that even goes to Whoopi Goldberg. Um, I just. But Robin Williams holds a dear and special place in my heart. I never met the man, um, but I'm sure the fondness that I feel is what resonated with many, many, many people. 
you know, my parents enjoyed him, I enjoyed him, and my children enjoyed him. Just great. So you have, yeah, you have three generations where he really, really, you know, my son knows exactly who he is, and it's not because of his, his the way he left this earth, but it's because of what the, the, the projects and the things in, of entertainment that he did before that touched my my son. And then you have, you know, my daughters are seven and ten years older than my son, and he and and them too. They grew up, you know, Mrs. Doubtfire and Aladdin. I mean, those are like huge, huge um, uh, pieces of their art life, if you will, or movie culture life. And then for for me, I mean, I remember the you know comedy, the stand up comedy, and. Um, you know, his front and, and all the good stuff that he did with uh, Whoopi Goldberg and um, who's my other guy? Saturday Night Liver. Why can't I remember? Yeah, his forget name? his name. But Robin Williams, I had an opportunity. Yeah. My wife, uh, Sharon, and I had an opportunity to meet him uh, like, to, like 12, 13 years ago. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, and to have dinner with him, uh, what, uh, we were, we were invited to a real star studded, uh, event. Uh, it was uh, very, I don't know if it's still very popular, but birthday parties are a big deal in LA at uh, bowling alleys. Did you know that? Yes. Um... And my, my good friend, Barry Bonds, the baseball, great baseball player. Um, he had his 40th birthday party in LA at a uh, bowling alley. And uh, sitting at our table in the bowling alley the, was Robin Williams. And uh, my wife, Sharon, wow. and I had an opportunity to meet him. And uh, what a what a terrific, uh, very humble, gracious, uh, very warm. And he was very nice to us that night. And uh, he is, uh, even prior to that night, uh, was one of my greatest uh, legendary actors. So good at everything that he does. There was nothing that? that he can't. Robin Williams just incredible. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, my favorite movies of Robin Williams are definitely Awaken and Dead Poets Society. Wow. I also love Good Morning Vietnam. You know, of course, than the other. But I, you know, I just why don't yeah. we why don't we move yeah. on because uh, uh, as you know, a big part of uh, the Dean Blackman show is to inspire and. Uh, educate and motivate and no one's better doing it better than maria cap today with uh, the project Aww. the projects you're working on and uh i just admire and respect you unbelievable for what you balance and and how you handle family and your business and oh dean you're such a sweetheart if i were there i'd be kissing you <laughs> and to have such uh, great uh, children that are so uh, creative that um i'm also hoping that they're going to be each one of them be guests on my show in the future oh absolutely they would love that absolutely but why don't we why don't we get to three of these projects that you're working on that inspire and create social change why don't we start with uh, the first project uh, that you're working on this hurricane music video if you could share with the audience yes well that one is again that's another project that has been motivated by the collaboration of myself and my daughter Rafaela. Rafaela is working with um, the Enrage Entertainment team, they're an indie uh, music label, and uh, they wrote this song, Hurricane, and uh, Rafaela fell in love with it and had an opportunity. She was looking for a project to collaborate with a friend of hers um, who's a rapper. His name is Chris Red. He's from, uh, uh, I guess, most notably would be recognized in the... Um, uh, feature film, pop star, never stop, never stopping. I think that's Judd Apatow. Anyway, they were looking for a project to work together, and Chris was gracious enough to tell Raphael, you name the place, the time I'm there kind of a thing. So this song fell into her lap on accident. They were just, like, fi finding stuff to work on, and Bruce and Ebony from Enrage shared this song with Raphael. Raphael said, this is perfect. I love the song. I love what it's about. I love what it says. And it has a rap, you know, there's rapping in it. It's very urban pop. I'd love to do this with Chris. So they recorded it. And again, just like So What, there's definitely a strong story. And so me, I'm very visual. I was able to see the story and um, had a friend out here that 
I worked with as a producer, and Raphael has also worked with on another music video that she did uh, for another art artist, Salvatore um, Santana. And so this producer, Marco Di Molina, really a great visualist, if I'll say. And uh, Hurricane was taken from the word and the, the music, the vibe, and transferred into a story. You know, Raphael, again, really spearheaded the whole thing in terms of what she wanted. And the song is about and was written with the idea of a strong woman not being confined by the limitations of anything, whether it's her relationship by another person, a man, uh, society's norms placed on her. So that's what the song's lyrics are about. So what we did was we trans, um, we transcended that into a visual piece and the music video um, basically shows iconic women um, that Raffaella portrays over time. And uh, Chris is also appearing in it as a featured guest. And that's coming out, uh, we're hoping that that'll come out, um, we're looking to release it the second week in November. Wow, how old is Raphael? Raffaella is, I have to think, because then I know how old I am, and, and I don't think about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she's 24. Well, she's got beautiful genetic genes from her mom and dad, and she's a oh. beautiful, beautiful young lady, and... If uh, if anyone can uh, go uh, hear her voice just online, why don't you tell the audience where uh, oh, where where they can go? Because I was bl I was just blown away. She is beautiful. Oh, thank you. She's got yeah, an unbelievable voice, and and the message the message that uh, she portrays is is really unbelievable about her admiration for uh, powerful powerful women over the years that she truly admires and respects yes oh my gosh and she did so much research and like i said it was a collaborative effort and there's so many people that you that are involved when you look at a three and a half minute music video i mean it's, it's about amazing it's unbelievable yes, it's unbelievable to hear her, her her vision yes it's unbelievable to hear her that she talks about and sings about yeah. really women that are her heroes that she admires and respects. I know. I mean, the music video is going to be fun. I hope everybody will find it where um, it's 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 all about creating awareness and, you know, people to become acquainted and engaged with Raffaella. Again, social media. Her name is R-A-F-F-A-E-L-A, -F -F -E Raffaella. Her website is raffaellacap.com. And right now you can go there. Uh, you can obviously find her on a social media, Facebook for sure, Raffaella Cap, and or as well as Raffaella. And then her website um, will have the music video when it's released as well as the song downloadable. And uh, we run a contest which we'll be executing and sharing with everyone. And then even after the video and music, vi the song and music video are released, we're going to continue to run the contest to engage people because I feel like and, and again this was Raphael's idea and then just I'm facilitating it because I feel like it's important and that is the idea of validating and affirming those that come before or those people that are in your life and a hurricane again we're talking about women but it could be anyone the contest we ran specifically was sharing you know who your female hurricane is and why so we have, we, we received an overwhelmingly um, supportive response from people and just we, we nailed and have a couple that we're going to be um, sharing in our social media world um, and we're going to combine and I'm in the process of editing that with some behind the scenes footage, even highlighting some of the people that were involved with our crew. Uh, we had an incredible crew and a a number of incredible women, a choreographer by the name of Blackbird, Ebony Vanderdeer, who is one of the Enraged team, uh, the indie label. I mean, these are women who are hurricanes in their own right. Right. Um, so that's exciting. I'm very excited. And, and to find out about the contest and about the release, I would definitely find Raffaella on Facebook. Um, 
and or me. I'll be posting and tweeting about it as well. Well, you and Raffaella are surely blessed that uh, it's it's uh, just terrific that uh, mom and daughter are able to collaborate together on yeah. on an unbelievable music video that uh, I find uh, just incredible. Uh, to well, be- I know who your hurricane is. <laughs> I know you would say your mom first and foremost, and I know you'd also say your wife. Yep, it would, it I would, know. it would be no question about it. I've got to say, it's my eighty-nine-year-old mom, Jean Blackman, who yes. was uh, who was my first, very first guest on my show back in late July. Uh, everyone could even listen to that show again on the show's YouTube channel and uh, on iTunes. But my mother's show was just incredible that I had an opportunity to launch this great radio show that I love to do every day and be able to launch it that my first guest is my 89-year-old mother down in Delray Beach, Florida. That the most difficult thing was setting up uh, being able to do the show by way of Skype audio with her. But uh, what's happened is since then, she's been uh, appearing on two shows since then, and I receive more emails and text messages and letters saying that my mother should be a guest every week on the show. (laughs) (laughs) So cute. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to make it a point to listen to that show because I have not had the chance to sit still. Well, just like, just like your family, uh, how many women can you meet today that, uh, had a, had to, uh, manage a husband for so many years. Unfortunately, my dad passed away, uh, unexpectedly in 2000, July. And uh, to raise two sets of twin boys, four in diapers at the same time, then to have Dean and to manage that for so many years. And what's what's eventually remarkable is that we all seven of us worked for so many decades in the same business together with Twin Lab. Gee, it sounds familiar. Yep, sounds familiar. So uh, may I have the fiscal fortune? May the fiscal fortune and abundance come my way that blessed your family as well. Well, thank you. We're going to still, we're going to focus on what we love doing and the uh, the rest of the abundance hopefully shall follow. Well, as my mom said, if you listen to the first show again, what she'd like to see in this world that's that she feels is missing is uh, more of a closeness of the family and more love today. So after all these years, even though we're not in business anymore, uh, Everyone, uh, all my brothers are all healthy and uh, mom is, and we're all closer and loving than ever before. Beautiful. I love that. I have to meet your mom. I want to meet her. Absolutely. Maybe we'll, who knows, maybe we'll do a show together, me, you, and mom. I think that would be fun. Yep, definitely. But otherwise, let's move on to the next project that's really special, inspiring, and yeah, creating well, social change, which is uh, the Reach Hit, uh, the Escape uh, feature film that's in pre-production. Yeah. If you could talk yes. about that a little bit. Well, we we can stop saying Reach. I have to let go of that. But it it it's been with me for uh, you know a year and a half now in development, and the script was called entitled Reach. We've um, attached a director to it, and we're moving forward. You know, there's always rewrite going on, um, but we've attached a director. We're uh, really in the early stages of pre-development and financing with a goal to produce this and be in principal photography March of 2017. And the title of the film is Hit Escape. Um, so this movie, uh, this project is a project that is simultaneous. And I first have to backtrack and talk about the documentary film, Find an Identity, which I know you have uh, uh, there on your list and you're burning to talk about as well. And I appreciate it. Um, and then that also brings me to the original story of, you know, we'll even go start with Robin Williams. So Robin Williams passed away this summer of 2014. And at that time... Uh, I was out here in Los Angeles for about a year and a half, and um, the theater scene out here is very different than the East Coast, but my daughters, Raphaela and Natasha, really wanted to perform, but because they were in school and with their schedules and what they had going on, 
they they did do some auditions locally, but they just found it difficult to audition, call back, and, and commit to a project here with another theater community. And so um, at the burgeoning request of the girls, they brought two plays to my attention. And both plays touch upon the very same themes of Hit Escape and the documentary film that um, I'm in the process of uh, post-production on, Find an Identity. And that is the themes of adolescence becoming uh, coming into their own, um, who am I, how do I fit in? And I go back to Robin Williams because both of the plays touch upon suicide and how one grapples with that and then the aftermath and the impact that not only the individual who passes from suicide experiences, but also those that are left behind. So in the summer of 2014, simultaneous to Robin's passing, and my daughters bringing these two plays to my attention, we I chose to direct and produce the play Dog Sees God, Confessions of a Teenage Blockhead, which in the theater community is a cult um, and a classic. It's written by Bert uh, V. Royal, who is most known uh, by his screenwriting credit, um, Easy A, starring Emma Stone. And most recently, he had as a TV show on the Freeform channel, um, uh, recovery road. So that's who he is. But the play itself, again, touches the very same themes that come into play in my documentary that I explore, find an identity and the film hit escape. Um, the reason I bring the play up and that backstory is because in the play, I cast a young man, Johnny James Fury as the lead. And, um, he and I forged, a uh, a friendship beyond just actor director. And I decided to document the actors stories that were precipitated really by Johnny's story. Um, so I had a behind the scenes videographer video, all of the actors um, developing their character, exploring what it was like to be in high school, be a bully, bully, be bullied, be the stand, the bystander, wow, yeah. you know, experimentation with, you know, sex, drugs, uh, coming into terms of who they are in their own identity, not just sexual identity. I mean, just even who they are in their own skin and bones and soul. Um, so we documented that. And I'll just talk again about Johnny James. He shared his story and his story was very much about how one small gesture can change the life of another human beings. Wow. So I took that message and became very, you want to call it obsessed, fascinated, intrigued. You can say it's my psychology background, but just really working with young kids. You know, this is not a new idea. We live in a world, especially now that's compounded with social media and the internet where it's just more in our face and we're more aware of what can happen when a young people, when young people struggle with who they are and how they fit in. And in high school specifically, I just feel that, and, I, and in my research and doing this documentary specifically, and then writing the script with Johnny, that's why I, I use Johnny, he's one of the writers on the script, Hit Escape, um, I found it fascinating and important to share the story uh, and, and understand what it's like to be in high school, what it's really like to be in high school, not what not what it's, um, not the cliches per se, but just when we're in high school, what is it like to go from, um, you know, early ninth grade and then transition into graduation and college and why is it easier for some or why is it more difficult for others? So my documentary film explores the questions, who am I and how do I fit in? I, use Eric Erickson's um, developmental stages of identity formation to really understand the subjects and the amazing young people that participated as well as parents 
that participate in my documentary film are most generous. And uh, they range from your young person who looks from the outside as though they have it all together, academically, socially, uh, engagement in extracurricular activities, all through the gamut, just go from that extreme to the very other extreme where someone is grappling and struggling with their gender identity, right, we right. Have sexual identity, everything. So that's my documentary film. Find it's a, it's an unbelievable topic that you picked. And I, I know, you know, listen, our kids are all grown up. They're 32 and 29, but, uh, I just find as I speak to people, just even all over the country, as kids are growing up today, it just yes. seems it just seems to me that the adolescent days, those growing up through junior high and high school, is just harder and more challenging for kids today than it was uh, for my kids growing up and when we were growing up. I, I don't know if you find it that way. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what it is. the The issues. And the very concerns are the same. In other words, bullying, depression, uh, figuring out how you identify and fitting in, the transition and rite of passage of where your peers' validation and affirmation become more important than your, your parents and or teachers. All that stuff is the same. The difference today is the accessibility and the in your faceness of the world. So my son watches TV, gets his news, engages with his friends all through his handheld device. <laughs> Everything is through that device. Right. He goes to school and it's his laptop. He's being educated in reinforced lessons, laptop. He plays games. It's through his Xbox, his PlayStation. Yes, he still sees his friends socially in person and does all those same So it sounds things. like you're going to blame technology. What's happened with technology where it is today? Well, I'm not blaming it, but I will say that there's not a rest. There's no rest. There's no time down. With when you and I grew up and when our when your children grew up and for the most part of the early years of my daughters, not the second half of their lives, but the early years, we had a rest. There was rest. We were in school. We were surrounded by school, right? We, we experienced the things that I've just talked about, but then we came home. We went to our sports or our, our Girl Scout or Boy Scout or whatever our extracurricular acti theater, you know, art class, whatever that extracurricular activity was, community through your temple or your church, whatever it was, your family, it was an escape. Technology was not involved. Now today, the accessibility to the information, the accessibility to the socialness is 24 Seven. So I'm not blaming it. I'm just saying that the accessibility to it is nonstop. So we're more aware of when the problem happens, which is someone hurting themselves, right? Passing from suicide or showing up at school and hurting others, bringing a gun or a knife and taking the lives of others. We're more aware of it happening. That's all. Wow. Well, it's a great uh, it's a great video. It's a great project that you're working on, and people could view uh, some of it at uh, hitescapemovie.com. That's h i t e s c a p e movie.com. Is that correct? Well, let me just qualify. So, the documentary film "Find an Identity" can be viewed. I'm in I'm in produ post production on it, so actually, you can go to my social media and my website, which is cappuccielli.com and my social media, which always is Facebook for find an identity. We will eventually have a website for that project. Hit escape is a feature film. So the documentary Dean, just to clarify, that is our nonfiction story. And then my fictional story is hit escape, right? Which, yes, that is correct. Hit escape movie.com. Um, that is a, a project that we're in pre-development on um, and uh, fundraising for finance. And we will be shooting that low budget in March of 2017. And that also explores and touches similar themes. It is a becoming of age piece to 
the very thing that I'm passionate about and explore in the documentary film. I hope that's clear. It's two separate Absolutely. Projects. Very clear. It's yeah. very exciting. And I know that you've been very successful at raising uh, some money. Uh, but, you know, obviously, there's uh, if anyone has any interest, uh, you're always seeking additional financial partners that people could reach you directly at capricelli.info yes. at gmail.com. That's C-A-P-P. R-I-C-I-E-L-L-I dot info at gmail dot com. So is there yes, anything? I really, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just, you know, there's certainly opportunities to partner with um, me in this journey. It's not just me again. It just takes a village to do stuff like this. Um, but there are, are many opportunities where uh, I welcome uh, partnerships to help get the message out there. Um, and I really feel that we're not just telling stories that have been told before, but we're telling it in a different, new and creative way that hopefully will resonate with, uh, you know, just like Robin Williams resonated and touched the hearts of, in my family, three generations, I'm really hoping and feel pretty confident that what I'm executing here, specifically on these two projects, will cross the boundary of generation as well. So it's not just for, you know, your high school, middle school uh, population to enjoy this or gain something from it. It's really to create dialogue change. And I hope that especially in the documentary film, we offer some solutions. What else do you want to share about the documentary film uh, Identity? So find an identity. Um I would just say if any if anyone has any questions or is curious in getting more information about um, the project, it's best to contact me, uh, like you had suggested, on the info at gmail.com. Um, it's uh, going to be uh, a piece that will be used for the educational market. It will be a piece that um, right now in terms of distribution, we're looking at educational distributors to partner with. And I will be uh, premiered. Uh, the goal is to have it uh, PBS here in Los Angeles. We already have um, a commitment from them to air it. That'll be Mental uh, Health Month in May. And then, of course, they'll air it again in September, which is uh, Suicide Awareness Month. So I guess that, that would be it. I, I don't know that I need to say anything. I can't else. believe I can't believe that's it. With everything that you do, I, I can't imagine that's it. I was going to ask you, uh, what's the future? What's next for you? Well, I the film festival circuit will definitely be a fun ride after we wrap both Find an Identity and Hit Escape the Movie. I'm really excited to be partnering with Jennifer um, B. White. She's the director, writer, and my um, co-captain, co-producing the film. So that's exciting, and that's the future. And then taking that to the festival circuit. Um, and then the TV pilot. I want to I turn that. I want to make that happen. That is really fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I know we're running down on time, and I just want to say I want to uh, I want to thank you very, very much for making time from your busy schedule. Oh, my pleasure, Dean. You're a doll. I think what you're doing is wonderful, and thank you so much for having me. And I just want to let you know that whether uh, it's in L.A. or uh, or coming back east here, I hope uh, you know that you're always welcome from L.A. or uh, or here in the studio to come back on my show anytime. You got it. It's and a I, date. And I want you to say hello to uh, everyone in your family that I send my regards. I absolutely will. But in, clo absolutely. in closing, I just want to say that any anyone in the audience that has children that are aspiring, that want to be in the entertainment business, uh, any parent that's listening, you've got to get in touch with Maria Cap, uh, Capricelli Productions. Just a remarkable lady, and uh, with a with a whole host of experiences uh, in the business. And what could be better than having experiencing it firsthand with uh, your own three children? I mean, nothing nothing better than that. Not not a better example, and uh, to show so any any parents and children that aspire to be in the entertainment business. Uh, please get in touch with Maria Cap. She is uh, quite a lady and a, a very good friend of mine. 
So Thank on, you, on that note, I just want to hear from all our listeners. Listeners can reach out to us with the free text number for U.S. residents. It's 631-372-8849. That's 631-372-8849. We'd love to hear from you, include your name and location, and we will mention you on the show. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and to hit the subscribe button on the show's YouTube channel. If you would like to leave a comment, use the box below. If you'd like to share your story, ideas, and be a guest on the show, go to deanbleckman.com and email me directly. I would like to thank all my listeners for being with us today. From all of us at the Dean Blackman Show, have a great day. You've been listening to the Dean Blackman Show live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.